everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. Another great presentation. We're going to continue our journey into antibiotic world. My name is Dr. Pramil Charya, the program director, internal medicine residency, transitional residency, associate professor of medicine, the two large medical schools in the United States. So let's go into our topic. We've been giving lectures on antibiotic. Um, yesterday, we looked at uh, the large classes of antibiotics, which blocks the protein production or protein synthesis inhibitor. So each one of those drugs in that category, we're going to go and uh, look at it, okay? So <clears throat> today's topic is going to be rifamycins. Now we got the structure of the rifamycin. So it's very important to know mechanism of action. So if, uh, if anybody planning to take any examination, definitely how the mechanism of action we need to know. Right, so what happened, ribomycin? They bind to the beta subunit of the bacteria, DNA dependent RNA polymerase, okay, and then inhibit RNA synthesis. So, all the RNA, mRNA, rRNA, tRNA synthesis inhibited. So, no protein synthesis, the bacteria cannot reproduce, okay. So, we have so the first thing we need to know is the ribomycins. Um, binds to the beta subunit of the bacteria dependent RNA polymerase. Inhibit the RNA synthesis, no protein synthesis, no growth or multiplication of the bacteria. Now, after that, let's look at the coverage. What kind of coverage do we have in this, right? Gram positive, very limited coverage, covers staphylococci. <clears throat> Gram negative, also limited, H influenza, Neisseria meningitis. But there are a group of bacteria, mycobacteria, it covers very well. So you will see these drugs in the mycobacterium uh, tuberculosis, mycobacterium avium, mycobacterium, even leprosy, mycobacterium lepre. Remember that. So this mycobacteria, these drugs are very common for the treatment of that. Okay, now four drugs we need to know. First one is rifampin. I have written in orange color. Why is that? It produces orange colored urine, orange tears. Um, any body secretion is can turn into, <clears throat> even people taking, um, you know, putting, um, what is it, the contact lenses, even the color changes to orange. So if you prescribe <clears throat> rifampin, warn the patient about the orange color, otherwise it's going to be a lot of anxiety. And uh, the doses given TB, <clears throat> 10 mg per kg per day, Nicerium meningitis, 600 mg Q12, two days, H influenza, 600 mg times four days. So what does it do? It also induces P450 enzymes in the liver. So the breakdown of the, um, uh, the drug in the metabolites is kind of faster, okay? So you have to be careful about the dosing. And then the next drug we're going to go into, rifabutene, and it's again uh, mycobacterium avium complex, uh, 300 milligram per daily. It's a P450 inhibitor. So that means metabolism is slowed, can stay in the system for a long time, my friends. But remember, the word I want you to, it can cause uveitis, okay? Remember, that's what you need to remember. Rifabutene, you can use it in TB, 600 mg, two times per week. It's a P450 inducer. And then you got rifaximine, a very common drug we use in the hospital now these days, okay? It's not, the thing you need, it's not systemically absorbed. So if you take it, it works in the gut, okay? So usually you can use it for travelers' diarrhea. But recently they found out you could use this to kill the bacteria flora in the colon, which produce ammonia. So when do we worry about hyperammonemia? The patient have hepatic encephalopathy, okay? It's a very common drug. You need to know the dose. Now, they usually use 400 milligram TID, so the board or any examination purpose, they can ask you rifaximine. How does it work? It go, it's not systemically absorbed. So if you get, take it by mouth, it kind of stays in the gut, colon, and clean and clean, kill the bacteria which produce ammonia. Ammonia level goes down, hepatic encephalopathy, and uh, hepatic encephalopathy will increase, I mean, it will decrease or get better, okay? You can also use in the um, irritable bubble syndrome, okay? And so let's look at the summarize of our um, finding right here, the class of antibiotic, blocks of protein production. The group, rifamycin, my friend. How does it work? It binds to beta subunit of the bacterial dependent RNA polymerase. That's what you need to remember that. Don't forget, it binds to 
um, DNA dependent RNA polymerase and inhibit the RNA synthesis. So no protein, no bacteria, right? And then look at the coverage, very limited coverage in the gram positive and gram negative, but the things to remember, the importance in mycobacteria, rifampin, remember, it can cause orange colored urine. Rifabutin, remember, it can cause uveitis. Um, and then rifapentin, you can in TB, and rifaximine is the drug you need to remember. Hyperammonemia, liver cirrhosis, and it can also have rolling irritable bowel syndrome. Thank you so much for watching. God bless.